Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 6 of the chapter Chemical Reactions and Equations. In the previous video, I told you about the five types of chemical reactions. The first was combination reactions where you have more than one reactant and one product is formed. Then we came to decomposition reactions, the second type, where you have one reactant and it breaks down to give you more than one product. And the third was displacement reaction, where one part, one part of a reactant takes the place of another part of the reactant and thus pushes it, displaces it from its original position. So that is a displacement reaction. Then came the fourth kind that was a double displacement reaction where there was a complete exchange of positions of parts of reactants and the final was the oxidation reduction reaction where I just gave you one definition where I told you when oxygen is added it's known as oxidation and when oxygen is removed from a reactant it is said to be that process is known to be reduction. Let us now discuss these different types of reactions one by one. So the topic of this video is combination reactions. I'm going to discuss the combination, the first type, that is the combination reactions. As I told you in the previous video, that in combination, what does combination mean? It means that two different parts are joining together to give you, they are combining together. So in a combination reaction, you have more than one reactant and they result in the formation of a product. Now this was what I had shown you just in the form of this uh, graphic representation. When you are looking at equations and you are given a question where you have different chemical equations and you are expected to identify a combination reaction, you really have to be looking only for the number of reactants and the number of products. Now, now we would like to be more specific. What can these reactants be and what are these products? Whenever you have more than one reactant, these two can either be two different elements or they can be an element and a compound or they could be a compound and a compound. But whatever be the reactants, whether it's an element, both of them are elements, whether they are compounds, both of them or one of them is an element and one of them is a compound. In any case, whatever are the reactants, they are going to join, they are going to fuse together and form just one product and that is the that obviously is a compound because if you have at least two elements which are joining together it results in the formation of a compound so you get one compound as the product i've given you 10 different examples here according to your book which are examples of combination reactions as i said that the first case is scenario is where you could have an element combining with an element to result in the formation of a compound. So the first six examples are of that kind. You have an element E and E is element combining with an element. Right? The first example is magnesium. It combines with oxygen to give you magnesium oxide. Now, what is done in these equations? The physical states are given to you. You know how to make a chemical reaction, a chemical equation more informative. You can write the physical states of substances. You can write the conditions of the reaction. You can talk about the heat exchanges that take place in a chemical reaction. If you uh, do not know this, I would encourage you to go back a few videos and uh, a couple videos and watch part four or part three in which I told you about how to make a, a chemical equation more informative. So now, I also explained this process to you that if you have a magnesium ribbon and this magnesium ribbon is a, a silvery white metal ribbon and it has a corroded surface so you rub it with sandpaper and you burn it and when you burn it it reacts with the oxygen of the air and it burns to produce magnesium oxide. Here although it is we are talking of combination reactions I'm just excited to add a little information to you. What did I tell you yesterday? That whenever you have oxygen being added to a substance, the substance is getting oxidized. So if you really see oxygen is being added to magnesium, so this reaction is also a redox reaction. Although we understand this later when we do redox reactions and any, any reaction where you see oxygen is being added to a substance is not only a combination reaction, it's a redox reaction too. So reactions are not exclusive. A type of reaction 
cannot be described as only one kind of reaction. The same reaction can fall into different categories. So anyway, magnesium combines with oxygen to give you magnesium oxide. There are two reactants and one product. It's a combination reaction. Again, hydrogen burns in oxygen to produce water. And this also is a combination reaction. Why? You have two different elements combining to form a compound. Then you have carbon. Carbon in the form of coal. And when coal burns, it burns in the oxygen of air. Oxidation is taking place. And it results in the formation of carbon dioxide. Also here you might wonder, I told you oxidation and reduction always take place simultaneously. If something is getting oxidized, then something else is getting reduced. So if oxygen is adding to carbon, carbon is getting oxidized, but oxygen itself is getting reduced, right? This is just a little information I'm throwing in so that when we actually come to that topic, it becomes easier for you to understand. Now, the next reaction is where you have two different elements, hydrogen and chlorine in their gaseous forms. And they join together to give you hydrogen chloride gas. Hydrogen chloride gas is not an, does, you know HCl is an acid, we always say HCl is an acid. But HCl does not behave as, is, as an acid as long as it is in the gaseous state. When you dissolve it in water, the aqueous solution of HCl, that is when we call it hydrochloric acid. It turns into an acid when you dissolve it in water. Anyway. That is uh, just added information here. Hydrogen and chlorine, they were two different elements. They combined together to give you one molecule, one product. Therefore, this is a combination reaction. Now, next question. Oh, sorry, next equation. You have sodium and sodium combines with chlorine. Do you know, uh, again, it is a little too early to talk of this, but sometimes addition of chlorine is also known as oxidation. And uh, as we do, I told, and if you remember, I told you that there are different definitions of oxidation and reduction, and I gave you only the simplest definition, which was adding of oxygen. But as we go further, we understand there are other definitions, and according to those definitions, these are also oxidation reduction reactions. And sodium and hydrogen here are getting uh, are getting oxidized. Now. Sodium gets oxidized or burns in chlorine to give you sodium chloride, right? So uh, the next equation again, what are you focusing on? Two reactants result in the formation of one product. And what is the type of combination reaction? What are the type of reactants we have here? In all these examples, you had element combining with element. A molecule of one element combining with a molecule of another element. One more example of this kind. You have iron, which is solid, combines with sulfur, which is also solid. What is this triangle that we show over the arrow? You remember I told you the conditions of a reaction are shown by making, uh, by writing them above and below the arrow mark. So when you heat it, it results in the formation of iron sulfide. A triangle pointing upwards means we are heating it. So iron combines with sulfur to give you iron sulfide. And this is also a combination reaction because there are two different uh, elements in the reactants and there's only one product. They're joining together to form one product. It's the same in the remaining examples also. But the only thing that we that is different here is that we will now talk of not just element with element. We talk of compound with compound and then compound with element. So let us now take two examples of compound with compound. Example 7, compound with compound. You have calcium oxide. Calcium oxide is known as quicklime. It is also called lime and it is usually used to whitewash the walls of homes. So calcium oxide that is quicklime, when you dissolve it in water, it results in the formation of calcium hydroxide. Now calcium hydroxide is called slaked lime. It is called slaked lime. Do you know this process is highly exothermic? When you put water into calcium oxide, it starts swish swishing and it releases a lot of heat and the vessel in which the man who is, uh, the, the man who is actually by washing your house, he mixes it and he stays away from it because it's a violent reaction. After a little while, when it cools down, the calcium hydroxide, that is when it adds more water to it and he dilutes it. That is when it is, we call it lime water. That is when we call it lime water. And in a way, he uses that lime water and he whitewashes your walls with it. He paints the walls with this lime water. 
Now the question is that does the if you've ever realized that the walls that are whitewashed they feel like chalk they feel like chalk because this is calcium carbonate that is that it gets turned into but what did i just tell you that the man who whitewashes your walls he paints calcium hydroxide solution to it not calcium carbonate so how does that calcium hydroxide turn into calcium carbonate that is what happens when you leave have you noticed that when you whitewash the walls they are wet and they are dull but as the walls they dry up after a little while in a day or two they the color it becomes brighter it becomes whiter and it starts shining so what happens for that reaction to take place the calcium hydroxide which was painted on the walls it absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and when it absorbs it it reacts with the carbon dioxide of the atmosphere and results in the formation of calcium carbonate and water now i want to draw your attention to the fact that here the example of combination reaction is only calcium oxide and water combined to give you calcium hydroxide what this equation is not an example of a combination reaction why do i say this because in the products if you look we are not getting one product we are getting two products so this is just added information because it is interesting and i feel and the publishers of the book also feel that you should know about this so uh, this calcium oxide it absorbs the carbon dioxide of the atmosphere and when it absorbs it it gets converted into calcium carbonate which is nothing but chalk it's a shiny uh, powdery substance and it sticks to the walls because it's been painted like that and it sets there and water and the water evaporates so as the water evaporates the calcium carbonate coating which is left now it starts shining and it gives you that white shine to the walls now we come to the next example now in this example also we have two compounds that is ammonia and hydrogen chloride gas ammonia is a gas and it combines with hydrogen chloride gas you remember i told you when hydrogen and chlorine join together they result in the formation of hydrogen chloride gas which acts as an acid when you dissolve it in water so here we not say it combines with hydrochloric acid we say it combines with hydrogen chloride gas and results in the formation of a compound which is known as ammonium chloride so what are we noticing here there were two reactants whether they were elements or they were compounds there were more than one reactant and the product is only one therefore this is also a combination reaction right so ammonia combines with hydrogen chloride to give you ammonium chloride now we come to the next type where you have an element and a compound and they are joining together to give you one product so these are there are two examples of this kind you have carbon monoxide which is a compound it combines with oxygen both of them are gaseous result in the formation of carbon dioxide again let me bring your attention oxygen is adding so what kind of reaction is it carbon monoxide is getting oxidized to carbon dioxide and oxygen is getting reduced in this reaction and it is also a combination reaction right similarly the next uh, equation is you have sulfur dioxide gas which is a gaseous compound and it combines with oxygen gas or you would say it burns in oxygen to produce sulfur trioxide this reaction is also a redox reaction plus it is a combination reaction why because it has more than one reactant and it has only one product so these were combination reactions and how one equation can be more than a uh, more than can be classified into more than one category of reaction so this was all about combination reactions and i hope i gave you a little bit added information about the equations too you must try and memorize these equations because although right now identifying the chemical reaction will not be difficult even if you just imagine those to be balls and the um, and the compound to be one large molecule you would be able to identify the type of reaction but these reactions in future as you study chemistry they are very common reactions and they'll really help you if you try to memorize them if you don't you don't have to feel hassled about it right now slowly by and by if you keep trying you will get the hang of them and you will learn them 
So that was all about combination reactions. If you found my video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to all your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.